Welcome. Uh, part two of Ohm's Law uh, explanation uh, demonstration. Uh, again, if you were with us in the part one video, I talked about the five components that every circuit basically needs. Uh, power source could be the battery, the alternator, uh, circuit protection device, load, um, control device such as a switch we have here, and then of course the conductors in the, in the circuit. Now in the last video we talked about Ohm's Law, a little bit about what the three elements are of electricity. Um, and we talked about voltage, which is equal to pressure. You think of it as pressure in the circuit, electrical pressure. We talked about current a little bit, which is measured in amperage as a flow of electrons coming through the circuit. And then we talked a little bit about resistance. Uh, and I also talked about diagnosing um, a, a little bit of voltage in a circuit that's on and off. Uh, in that circuit, we had the, the switch first and then the load second, if you remember. In this video, I want to start off by explaining or showing what happens when the switch is uh, after the load. So we'll draw our circuit again. Here's our battery plus. They come in, of course, we have our circuit protection device. And then in this case, we have our load first, and then we're gonna come into the switch. And we'll go ahead and draw our on circuit. So we have our circuit protection device, our load, let me finish my bulb down here. And then here is our on switch, it's closed, and then our ground. And then this is the symbol, oops, get a little cleaner here. That's a symbol for ground. Okay, so here is off, here is on. Okay, again, we got a series circuit, single load. This one's a switch to ground. The previous video we talked about load to ground. So things are a little bit different. If I were to draw into my test points again, before and after each of these components, because that's what we're going to explain. Here's all our test points, and then our where we draw in our expected values. Remember, I think it's really, really critical to do this as you're beginning. You need to know uh, what's expected when you're looking at the schematic. Again, the schematic is kind of your roadmap in the diagnosis, because what happens when you get to the car? A ton of wires, loom, it's hidden. You're back probing these connectors. You, you start to get confused or disorientated. If you have your schematic and you built out the circuit, you analyze the circuit and you drew in at every point what's expected. So if this is off, remember Ohm's law says voltage up to the open. I'm going to have 12 volts expected all the way through to here. And then it'll be zero after that. Well, in a working circuit, Ohm's law says 12 volts up to the load. Okay, so right there's 12 volts. And then 0.1 or less after the last load. This circuit has one load. So we're going to go less than 0.1, less than 0.1 less than 0.1 all the way down. So those are my expected values. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Let me turn my light back on so you can see it. I'm going to turn this circuit on. Let me put my cover here. So we can, here you go. So now I have a working circuit. Let's put my test lead down here at the bottom. This, remember this is ground. This loops back up to the battery. So I'm, I'm making a circuit that looks like my schematic. This is called Valley Forge format for the schematic. Again, we'll go up here. Now, this is, uh, well, let's turn the circuit off first. We'll do this side. So, if I test it right here, I have <clears throat> should have oops, I was doing current a second ago. See, look at that. Even I made a mistake. Okay, 12.07 it's a good rule of thumb here to always check your leads. 12.09. Uh, so let's go back here and check that again. 12.09. Okay. Check every time I'm going down my thing here. If you're not checking your meters, um, you can get a false reading, right? Just like I did. I was doing an ammeter check earlier and forgot to switch it back. So now we go through the load right here. We have 12.09. So its voltage is doing exactly what it should be in an open circuit. Notice it's all consistent. That tells me as a tech that I have it open downstream. And when I come across this switch, I'm just going down here if you're following along, filling this in zero volts. So I'm after that open. So it's that voltage right up to the tip of that open switch right there and have zero afterwards. The fact that I'm seeing 12 all even consistent up to here, that's telling me that I have an open downstream. And once I get a zero, that means I have an open downstream or upstream, sorry. So let me turn this on and we'll do the same over here. So again, I come back up here. And I got 12.08. And this could be 12.07 because I've got a loaded circuit now and I'm using an uh, internal voltage regulator on this board. 
So 12.06, notice the drop. Key thing to think to notice as, as current's going through these devices, now we have current flowing. It's going to be consuming some of this voltage, which is our pressure. Now here we come across the load, we should be expecting less than 0.1. And I got 8 millivolts. See the little unit? 8. So 0 0.008 volts. Is that less than 0.1? Yep. Is it 0? No. That's good. Again, that tells me the circuit is working, it's intact, and when we get when we talk about resistance, I'll explain why. Uh, right here, just in front of the switch, 5.8 millivolts. I can do that, or I can do uh, 0 0.0058 volts. Both these are correct, if you can see that on the screen. And then after the switch, 2.1 millivolts. So here we go, 0 0.0021. And notice it's not zero like that. Again, that tells me I have current going through the circuit. There's a little bit of resistance. That's cre creating that voltage drop, but not zero. You know that that's not zero. So <clears throat> that is voltage. I'm going to turn this off. And then what I want to talk about, so those are two different circuits there. We have switch to ground here, and we talked about load to ground in part one. Um, go ahead and review that if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to go down and actually talk about current now for series and parallel circuits. So let me switch this circuit around. I'm going to put my switch back up top. This is going to make this a little bit easier for our video demonstration. Okay, I'm going to plug it in to right here. Actually, I'll do this one. I know it's black, but this makes it easier for the video. Power's coming through here, going through the switch, and then to right there. But what I'm going to do is I'll put that C bulb right there. And then I'm going to run this wire to right there. Notice I didn't put it on the component yet. I'm going to put it right here. And then we'll have the ground right there. Okay, so you can turn this circuit on. There you go, it's working. Cover it up so you can see a little with less glare. I think it's a little bit better. Okay, so now I have this working circuit. Let me turn this on and then we'll draw this a circuit right here. So here we have, uh, we're going to do Series, we're measuring uh, current now. So let's talk about amperage. So we'll do the A part of Ohm's law. And again, we'll resolve this at the end with all three elements. So I have battery positive coming in. Circuit protection device. I'm coming in right here to a switch. We'll have that switch open like that so it's off. This is the off side. Coming over here to a splice. And now that's this splice right here. Then I come down to a bulb. And then I'm going to have a ground like that. Okay. You can kind of see that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I've already talked about voltage. So let's talk about resist or, um, current real quick. So I'm going to switch this meter to milliamps. Turn my light back on. It's going to beep at me. Put it to the milliamp jack like I had before. And make sure we're on DC. So direct current. I'm on milliamps. Everything looks okay. Now here's the thing I want to show you real quick. Uh, about measuring directly with an ammeter. If you're going to measure into a circuit, let me draw this real quick. Battery positive, we have our fuse, and then let's do a real simple circuit. Let's do, uh, we'll just have a switch that we've been doing, a bulb. Okay, so here's a real simple circuit. Now I want to measure current here. Now here's the trick where some people get kind of confused. An, an ammeter is basically just a jumper wire. Internally it's jumped, and it's going to use uh, uh, kind of an inductive ammeter internally. It's measuring the magnetic field uh, of the current going through the wire. And it's going to give us a display of current. What does that mean to us as techs? Well, that means we can't use an ammeter and bypass the load. If I hook up the ammeter from here to here, that's parallel, bypassing that load, I'm going to blow up the fuse uh, or the end or the meter. So what I need to do is I need to make the ammeter part of the circuit. So you hook it up in series instead of parallel part of the circuit and it's really easy to do find any point in the circuit that you want to measure uh, current let's say right here and then if you disconnect that spot you're going to now have one and two connections okay right uh, openings so if i draw that again battery positive here comes that fuse here's your switch now i'm going to draw that disconnected see so now i have one and two when i disconnect it right there this spot right here is where i hook up my ammeter okay Right there is where I hook up my ammeter in line in series. I want all of the electrons to go through the ammeter. My personal preference is I like to use the fuses uh, just because they're easier on the car. 
Uh, this is a test board. I can measure am amps wherever I want. But again, when in doubt, if I pick one point and disconnect it, I'm going to have two points. I put my ammeter in line, in series between those points. And again, if I have a car, basically if I take a fuse, you know how the fuse has those internal spades and they kind of go like this. This is what I do. And then in here they have that fuse. Well, if you take the top of it and you blow the fuse open, okay, blow that fuse on purpose, and then up top here you can solder in, and I'll run in some alligator clips like that. And so basically when I hook up the fuse into the car, I can now hook up my ammeter to these leads, and it becomes part of the circuit. Real super simple, easy way that's least intrusive to measure current. So again, but when in doubt, the, an anime, the ammeter has to be in line and series um, with a circuit. You disconnect one point, you now have two points, put the ammeter in between that. Always back probe, uh, never front probe your connectors, you'll damage them. So anyway, let's be show, let me show you a little bit of difference about series and parallel, and a little bit about amps. So again, if I want to measure this circuit, and amps basically is going to be in a series circuit like this, I have one load. If I turn it on, it's going to always be um, the same. So whatever my current is right here, it's going to be the same right here. It's going to be the same up here. It's going to be the same here. Okay, that's Ohm's law. Um, you're going to have your, your amps are going to be the same. It's going to be consistent throughout the series circuit. And that's because the electrons are flowing through this circuit. And take your finger and follow it, and it's coming all the way through over here. So it's in line, it's in series. It has to go through anything to get to anything else. Okay, and I'll prove that to you. So let me take this point open. There's your two points I told you. I'll put this down here. I'm already switched over. Let me turn the light on. And now let's take, let me make sure I got K direct ammeter. I'm on this one, I'm on that one. Okay, turn my circuit on. Oops, what did I do? Uh, let's see, am I frozen on here? What I did. There we go. Okay. So let's uh, oops, go to direct current. There we go. So now I'm measuring, if you look right there, 31.31 amps. That's 310 milliamps. Okay. If I try to put this back onto the milliamp, let's put this in here. This should. I think my meter's not working. Yep, I'll have to fix that. I got probably got a fuse problem there. So let's go back to my main one here. Switch that over. Okay. So we'll have to leave it like that. But basically, what I'm looking at here is 310 milliamps, uh, and that can be if I take this apart, go back here, and then measure it up here. It's going to be the same. So if I do that right there. What do we got? Whoops. Right about the same. Okay. So we can, there you go. 300. So 300 milliamps, 310 milliamps is basically the same at any given point right there. So the reason why I changed the circuit the way it is, like this, with this little splice right here, is I can show you on this, this comes over. If I add another load right here and operate this, intact, what do you think is going to happen up here? It's going to have more or less, because I'm adding a resistance. I'm going to have more current or less current. So let me add this ground path here. Do that. And I'm going to run this one up here. So I'm going to run these together. Like that right there. And there you go. So let's measure it back up here again. And run that, and then there we go. What do we have? Survey says, oh, double, wow. Because I have two similar bulbs. I now have 630 milliamps. Um, basically, what happens is total circuit current is equal to the sum of individual branches. So if I measure this branch again, notice how only the one bulb goes out. If I measure this, it's gonna be the 310. And what I want to mention is that um, think of it as like a checkout line. Okay, you, you have extra resistance. There's an extra load. But overall, you're getting more customers through. You're getting more electrons through. So it's kind of analogous to that. That's current flow. 